Hi guys! So it would seem that since going allegedly minimalist, I have acquired another item of stationery. I think you're probably not surprised to see this, and I think we can all agree that minimalism is probably going to be quite relative for me with respect to planners. So um, this is the Filofax refillable notebook, and I got this because I've been curious about the disc band system for quite a while. And I was first looking at the uh, Staples Arc system, and unfortunately it turned out that the covers that I liked are made out of leather. Um, there was some confusion, and it said in some places that they were faux leather, but I checked, and actually they're leather, so I couldn't get one of those. And um, I'm still not quite sure about the Happy Planner. And so while I was looking around investigating the disband system, I discovered these, and these you're probably thinking these don't look disbound, and they're not, but they actually, they're like Filofax's answer to disbound. They work in exactly the same way, which I thought was really cool, and it was so intriguing that, well, you can see what happened. <laughs> um, so these um, are not that expensive. They cost about, I think, £11 um, on the Amazon UK, which is possibly slightly cheaper than on the Filofax UK website, but if so, only there's only like a pounds difference. Um, and the really interesting thing about them is that they are spiral bound notebooks, as you can see, but the pages are repositionable and removable and it's refillable. So I'll show you in a minute, it's exactly like the ARC system or the, the disk bound system, except that it uses spirals instead of disks. And when I was looking around trying to find information about these, I noticed that there isn't very much on them um, on YouTube at all. There are a couple of reviews. The most extensive one is by the Goulet Pen Company, and I'll link that below. But there really isn't a lot of information, so I thought it might be helpful. As always, buying stationery in the name of public service, right? Haha. <laughs> um, so I thought it might be useful for you to see them in case you, you're curious about them or uh, maybe you didn't know about them because I only found out about them recently. Um, so they come in quite a few different colors. Um, this is actually, I, I usually would go for a more colorful option, but for some reason, all of the other colors, and I don't know why they did this, they come in, um, fuchsia, like a light blue, a dark blue, um, an orange, I think, a, a red and a green. So lots of like great colors, and I would normally go for one of the blues, but all of the other colors have uh, a white stripe on this elastic, and then the spirals are also white. And I think that's probably a feature that a lot of people like, but I didn't like it. I wanted it to just be one solid color, and the only one that is just a solid color is the black one. So I don't mind black, but you know, usually if there's a colorful option, I, I, I would pick that instead. But anyway, that's why I got black. Um, but if you go to the Filofax website or to Amazon, you can see all of the different colors that they have. So if you don't mind the white stripe, then you've got lots of choices. And they come in two sizes, pocket and A5, and those correspond roughly to the Filofax binder sizes. So just to give you a bit of a comparison, because it's a notebook, it's, it's smaller than the binders. It's the size of an A5 sheet of paper. So if I compare it to this A5 size Jamie Notes binder, you can see that it's just it's a bit smaller. Um, it's like kind of a true A5 size. And then here it is compared to the Hobonichi Cousin. So the pocket one, I, I don't have the pocket one, but the pocket one um, would be like, I guess, sort of a bit smaller than an A6. So they are made out of a, like a faux leather cover. Um, and it's a kind of slightly slightly textured only very very much like you can sort of see a bit of a grain but you can't really feel it um and it feels like they have some kind of i don't think i'm not sure if there's any material on the inside it, it sort of looks like there is because there's a slight ridge around the edge but i think that's just a design feature because when you feel it it doesn't actually feel like there's anything hard inside this it's kind of pretty floppy i'll open it in a minute and then you can see and um as you've already seen it's got an elastic and the elastic has like a little um, kind of like niche carved into it, which is where the string goes, which is a feature that I haven't seen on any other of these notebooks like Moleskine's or Leuchtturm's that have uh, one of these elastic bands. So it's, 
it's intentionally got this place for it to go. And if you're wondering, um, there have been a lot of notebooks that I've seen where the elastic like kind of leaves an indentation. This one doesn't. There's no indentation at all. I don't really mind the indentations, but I've seen them on like um, the Passion Planner and sometimes on uh, Moleskine and Leustrom notebooks. And um, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. This doesn't have anything. So it's quite strong. It's it's not it's like it's sort of a bit floppy. It's like a, um, it's kind of like a cross between a hardback and a softback. It's somewhere halfway between. It's like kind of a bit sturdier than um, a soft uh, moleskin, if you know what I mean, um, but not like really hard. And it's just got this label, which peels off easily. It's left a little bit of glue, but that's just there. That's come off. And then on the side, as you can see, it's got this spiral, which which comes out as in it, it doesn't really extend very much, but you can see it. It's not it's not covered by the binding. And I'm not sure why they did that. I don't know if there was a technical reason for it. I would have liked it better because, as you know, I don't really like spiral binding. So I would have liked it better if this was completely covered up and you couldn't see the spiral on the outside. But I suspect it's probably something to do with the durability that it probably would be. I don't know, like maybe maybe the spiral it some ha helps to keep the spiral together, maybe. Um, and the spine is like kind of made out of the same material as um, as the cover, so it's sort of bendy. You can see here, it's kind of um, a bit. It's sort of soft, and it's got these like kind of two little ridges, which I guess are just a design feature. And there's no labeling, which is kind of odd for Filofax. Usually, you'd have the Filofax logo on the side, but you can see there's there's nothing here. Um, and then when you open it, it comes with this piece of cardboard, which I'm just going to take out now. And there's a piece of cardboard on the other side as well. So you see without the cardboard, it's, it's quite floppy. Um, and I think that this is one of the things that's making me a bit unsure about how I feel about this. I really like the idea of it and it was mostly because I, I was curious to try out this kind of refillable, repositionable system that didn't wasn't based on rings. Um, but it, it's not Filofax's fault because this is billed as a notebook and it really feels like a notebook. Like somehow I think that because it had um, a faux leather cover I was expecting it to kind of feel a bit more like a binder, even though I knew that, you know, obviously it, it's not as big and it, it, you know, it doesn't have the rings, but I kind of thought it would have more of a feeling of a, like a binder, kind of a sturdier feeling. But this to me feels very flimsy. I don't know if flimsy is really, maybe that's being unfair. I, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be durable, but it's somehow, it just really, it doesn't feel like, um, it kind of doesn't feel as, as sturdy and as, as substantial as what I was expecting, which is probably my fault because it's not like they, you know, said it was a planner, but I was kind of expecting it to be a, sort of more similar to, I guess, more similar to a planner cover. Um, whereas this kind of feels a bit like, it doesn't even feel like the clip book, which, I, which kind of seems more sort of substantial and, and faux leathery. This just, it kind of feels almost like very thick cardstock, even though it's not, but that's just the, the kind of feeling that it has. So it's very notebooky, if that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, there's nothing here on the inside. Um, then you get to the interesting bit, which is you can see these are the spirals. The spirals are not very sturdy either, which I don't think is a problem in this case. Um, although really, I mean, you know, you'd probably have to use it for a couple of months to be able to give a definitive verdict on that. But you can see that they like they're bendy. They're not they're not really strong. So it's a double spiral and it comes with this ruler. And this again, this is um, a lot thinner and bendier than the normal Filofax ruler. So you, if you compare this to the normal Filofax rulers, you can see the, the difference. Um, let me just take a standard Filofax ruler so you can see it's about the same size it's a bit a little tiny bit wider and a bit shorter but it's um see this one is like much sturdier which I don't think is a problem I, I really it's not like I think there's anything wrong with this but it just 
it kind of gives a different feel, I think. It feels sort of very insubstantial. Um, but you can, so you can see the cool thing here, this is the feature that sort of drew me to it, is that it works the same way as the Filofax ruler, in that it's got these, like kind of, it's punched and then it has a little slit at the side so you can slot it in or out. Um, but you can see that it's got a whole bunch more um, holes than a normal Filofax ruler would, and that's because, that's how this system works. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight spirals. And the way that the ruler works is exactly the same as how the pages work. So, ta-da! You can take this out, and then you can put it back in. So, I think that this is really clever, and I'm surprised that Filofax is the first to have come up with it. It's exactly the same principle as the disk band system, but instead of having the disks, you just, you just have the spiral, which I think is nice because even though I don't like spirals as a binding method, I think that this is, oh, you know, if you want to have removable and repositionable pages, this is a great way to go because you can already, you can see that these don't stick out hardly at all. So if you're writing, it's going to be really easy. The, the spirals don't really get in the way. As opposed to a disk bound system where the, the disks, you know, kind of whatever size of disks you have, the disks are going to stick out more. So they're going to be kind of more like rings. Um, and so I, I think that this is, this is quite nice because it's, it's like almost even with the page. And even if you flip to the middle here, the disks still don't really stick out very much. So I think that that's in the, the, the spirals. So I think that that's an interesting concept and a nice alternative to the disband system. Um, so if, if we just look at the paper here, so supposedly this is a hundred GSM paper. Um, which is like if you um, compared it to, let's say, Inkwell Press, which is like the thickest paper that I've heard of is 140 GSM, Lime Life is 120, normal Filofax paper is 70 GSM, um, and that like cotton cream is 90, so this is thicker than that. Uh, but it's not, it's not that, I don't know, it doesn't look very nice. It just looks like normal notebook paper. Um, if you look at the Goulet Pens review of this notebook, they do quite an extensive pen test with all different kinds of fountain pens, and apparently it, it holds up quite well. So it is allegedly fountain pen friendly for the most part, which is a good thing. I don't use a fountain pen, so I'm just like kind of going by the way it looks, and it, it doesn't look very nice. And I think that, obviously that's subjective, but I just think it, it looks like very kind of standard notebook paper. And I think that this is one of the major issues with this notebook is that because this is Filofax only, you can't get any other refills for it. You know, so if you're thinking you like the system and you like the, the way the cover looks and you wanted to like, you know, get some nice paper and put it in, you would have to cut your own holes. Or apparently the arc punches do work with this. There's another video that I will um, try to link below as well where um, she does a comparison between this and an ARC notebook. And the Filofax pages don't fit in the ARC notebook, but the ARC pages do fit in this, which is very useful to know because they make some, like, some more accessories and, and other stuff. Because Filofax, like, they only make this. Um, they make a few different kinds of paper, but they don't have like, you know, sticky notes and like all other things that you could get. And I, so I'm assuming that if it would work with ARC, that means it would also work with the Happy Planner and they have tons of accessories. So that like kind of makes it more um, customizable. Um, and of course you, you can also, even if you don't have an ARC punch, you, you can like just use a single hole punch and then cut slits in the side and, and put them in. So it's not like I'm saying it's impossible to customize this, but it's just not going to be as convenient. Um, this is a sample of the other paper that comes, that you can get for it, and they have these on Amazon. So this is blank, they just give you a few, a few sheets, um, and this is, um, gridded paper. So it's nice to know that it comes with gridded paper. Again, like, I just, I don't feel like this paper is particularly aesthetically pleasing. I don't know if that's just me. It's kind of, um... It almost looks blue, like a kind of dark blue, the lines. I, I'm not sure if that's just my eyes or if it really is but yeah the, it all kind of looks like a sort of gray blue and I don't know I like um gray lines like 
in um, at Leuchtturm is grey, but like the paper feels completely different. It's sort of creamy and the, the grey looks really nice. And for some reason, I'm just not digging this. And I don't know why. It's, it's not their fault. It's just somehow that, it, yeah, I, I'm not a great fan of the paper. Um, so you get these few samples and then you get, I think, 56 sheets of this lined paper. Um, So it's, it, aside from that sample, the rest of it is, is just, it's all lined paper. But you do, like, it, it's quite a thick um, chunk that you get. And then, this is the bit that I like the best. This is really cool. In the back, you get four dividers. And the first one also has a pocket. And obviously, they all slot in and out in the same way. So what you can do, and this is the reason why I got it. Well, OK. I mean, the, the real re reason why I got it was because I was curious to try this system out. But the pretext for getting it was because um, we've decided to like kind of make our flat minimalist and get rid of a lot of junk. And ironically, I thought, I need a minimalism planner. So I thought this would be really good because it has the different sections. So I could make one section per room and then write lists of all the stuff that we have to do and things we have to get rid of. Which is very exciting. And, and so the goal is that we will just be left with like a beautiful, empty, zen, minimalist flat with nothing but a gigantic shelf of planners. That's the, that's the vision. So um, yeah, so I really like the fact that this has a pocket and that these are different colors and that you can, you can put them wherever you want and then rearrange them. So let's say I'll put one section here and then another section here. And then I'll just give myself like a chunk of paper per section. And then another one here. And you can see these come out really easily. Um, they slot in really easily. There's no issue with that. I think it, it, it could be an issue over time. With Like if you are moving the same sheet in and out quite a lot, you might um, have issues with it. I don't think this would. This is like a kind of, feels like a, some kind of like coated cardstock. It feels like kind of almost plasticky. I think it, it might might be plastic, but it doesn't feel like, supremely plasticky, if that makes sense. It's like a sort of halfway between cardstock and plastic. So there you've got all your different sections. But now you, you can see here, you see just from taking that out, this is already like kind of bent. And I think that this is that there, if I got it back in. I think that this is a general issue with this sort of um, disbound slash refillable notebook system, not necessarily something that's unique to the Filofax ones, because I've seen a lot of people with um, like the Happy Planner, for example, or, or you know, other disband systems that that can happen with, um, mostly with the Happy Planner, because that's the uh, that's the system that I've I've seen most often. Um, and that was just the uh, the wrapping for the um, the sample pages, which I've taken out now. So this is what it looks like with the dividers in. And then if I decided, oh, I, you know, like, I don't know, um, I actually want to have this at the front, then I can do that. So I think that's really cool. And it, like, as you can see, it works exactly like a, um, a disbound binder works in that you just kind of rearrange the things and slot them back in. This, because I'm putting it at the front and it's quite full, I'm not sure if you could see that on camera, but it was already a bit more difficult to to put this in just because it's it's full um, and this kind of like bent a little bit and it's fine but I think if I took it out you'd see how that's kind of that's kind of catching a bit um, and you you might be able to see this one is like a little bit bent up so and then like one sheet of paper has come out um, not one sheet one one of the punches um, so I'm not like saying that this means that it's rubbish. It's just that these are things that you have to be aware of because I'm pretty sure that if you were going to be using this a lot and you know moving paper around a lot, that it it probably wouldn't hold up very well. But if you just are using it as a notebook and occasionally you decide you want to move a page to a different section, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so that's kind of how it, how it works and how it looks. Um, and I'll just show you the back here. So at the back, this is something else to be aware of, is that at the top and the bottom, um, you've got, let's see if you can see it. There's like a, see there's like a little hook at the end. 
Um, and the paper can catch on the little hook. It's just at the, the bottom and the top. And also, it's, it's not that sharp, but it's a little bit like kind of feels unfinished. And the binding, it's kind of bound so that it doesn't easily come apart, but like you, you could you could sort of pull this half of the binding away from the other half, like most spiral bound notebooks. Um, there's like kind of nothing holding the two sides together as opposed to a coil where like the whole thing is, is one piece. This is like two different pieces that have been sort of put together but not um, tied together, if that makes sense. And then the back has nothing on it. And then when you, when you turn it over on the very back, it's got Filofax, it's like debossed at the bottom which I think is nice. It's always very nice to have the Filofax logo. It's so friendly and comforting. And then um, this is like kind of the slot where the, uh, where the elastic goes. And so you just close it like that. So yeah, I, I think I, I'm still feeling kind of ambivalent about this. I really want to like it, but I'm not sure if I do. <laughs> um, and I think part of it was maybe just because somehow my expectations from seeing it on video, like I was expecting it to look a little bit more substantial than it does. Um, I think, you know, for a notebook, it's, it's great because if you compared it to like just a kind of standard spiral bound notebook, obviously it's, you know, it, you can, it will last for much longer because you can refill it um, and you can reposition things. So if you have the kind of project, like what I was thinking of where, you know, you have something with different sections and you want to be able to move things about freely, then it's, it's really useful for that. But... If you're, I think if you're, I don't know, I have the feeling that if you're a planner person like me and you're really into the aesthetics of, you know, like kind of what, the, what they feel like and look like and just kind of the whole thing, it's, it's, it feels much more like a notebook than I would like it to. So I kind of feel like for this project, I'd rather use one of my ring binders, which I've been trying to get away from, but I think for like a sort of temporary, like short-term project, um, I would prefer to have that because it would feel more substantial than this does. It's, if you were using this like just to take notes, like say, I don't know, in class or something, it would be good for that because it's it's lightweight, it's portable, um, and it's not like you would be devastated if you lost it or I don't know. It just kind of very much feels like a notebook, um, but it, you know, it has this cool feature of being able to move the pages around. So. Yeah, that's just my sort of initial impression of it. Um, I, I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to use it. I kind of, I think I, I might not, which is very sad. But and again, it's not like it's, I don't know, it's not like it was missold or anything. I think I just somehow was expecting it to be a little bit different than it is. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've got an experience with one of these, what you think about it. Um, and if you have any other questions that I haven't covered here. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.